Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we'll take a look at another home tech item from Nest called the Hello Video Doorbell. Now I have a number of Nest devices in my home, including the Nest Thermostat and Nest Protects, and I've had good success controlling those devices from HomeKit using HomeBridge, so I thought I'd give it another try. I also chose those doorbells over the ring doorbell because of its aspect ratio, which lets me see closer to my doorstep to see if any packages are being delivered. I also like the ability to have pre-configured phrases to say to those who may come and ring my doorbell. The Nest Hello comes with the video doorbell and packaging that includes a set of instructions, a Nest sticker to show the home is protected by Nest, and a warranty card. It also comes with a chime connector that connects to your doorbell to your existing doorbell chime, a box with all of the hardware you need to connect the doorbell, including a drill bit, and the wall plate along with an attachment that allows you to angle your doorbell depending on your field of view based on where your doorbell is located. To get started with installing your Nest Hello, you go to the Nest app and tap on Settings and then Add Product. From there, you use your phone's camera to scan the code found on the back of the video doorbell, which adds it to your list of devices. From there, you're taken to a setup assistant that begins to walk you through the installation and includes a setup video. You will need a drill and a Phillips screwdriver and your Wi-Fi password as the Nest Hello connects to your Wi-Fi network. Next, you are given some guidelines on the placement and any privacy laws and disclosure warnings. Once you've read that, you need to find the chime connector that was included in the box. The chime connector includes two hook connectors and two push connectors that will be used to connect your doorbell to the chime. Before getting started, you're told to turn off the breaker to your chime box so that you don't get sparks and possible shock while working with the electrical. In my own installation, my son accidentally turned the breaker on and there were visible sparks when two wires touched, so be sure not to skip this step. From there, you will remove the chime box cover along with any batteries the box may have. You will then want to take a picture of your wiring just in case something goes wrong and you need to put it back or reference it. You are then asked to count the number of wires you have connected to your chime box, excluding any wires that are not connected or loose. You are then provided with these visuals which you use to select the one that best matches your chime. You're then asked which door you will be using to connect your doorbell. From there, the instructions are specific to your type of doorbell and walk you through the steps to connecting the chime connector to your doorbell chime. First, you remove the front wire and connect it to the chime connector's white wire. You may have to clip the length of the wire while connecting it, and you want to make sure that it fits snugly in the plastic connector. You can test this by tugging lightly on the wire to make sure it is connected. Next, you connect the white hook wire to the front terminal and screw it down to the chime. Then you unscrew the trans wire and connect it to the second plastic clip. Finally, you screw the gray wire into the trans terminal and make sure that it is securely connected. When you are done with all of the connections, it should look something like this. Next, you want to find a place for the chime connector so that it fits in your chime box, but doesn't block the chime sound itself. I had to work with the wires a bit to get them to fit, and was able to fit the plastic piece on the side of my chime. There is also tape that you can use to affix it to the inside of your chime box, but I was able to fit it in without using the tape. With that part finished, we now move on to installing the doorbell itself. You want to locate the doorbell and the mounting bracket and get your screwdriver and drill and move to the front of your house. First, you'll need to remove your old doorbell and disconnect the two wires that give it power. I used a flathead screwdriver and pried the doorbell off and was able to easily remove the wires. Next, you will need to consider your doorbell's camera angle to determine whether you will need the angle bracket or not. In my case, I did need to use the bracket to get it to the right position to view the entryway to my front door. There is adhesive that sticks to the angle bracket to the wall mount plate to hold it in place. Once you've determined what you will use for the mounting bracket, you will need to mark the holes and then drill the holes for the screws using the included drill bit. Once you have the bracket installed, you connect the two wires to the back of the doorbell. From there, you click the doorbell into place on the bracket. You may have to push it in and even reset it to make sure that you have it connected properly so that it stays affixed to the mounting bracket. Once that is complete, you can turn on the power and watch your doorbell boot up for the first time. The app will ask you if you see the blue ring around the actual doorbell button, which will let you know that the power is on and the doorbell is connected. It then asks you where you are putting the doorbell so that it can add it to the proper place in the Nest app, 
and it starts to look for your camera. It uses another Nest device to aid in connection and setup. In my case, it used the nearest Nest Protect to aid in the setup and to get it connected to the Wi-Fi and added to my Nest account. Once installation is complete, it starts to show the video in the app so that you can see what the camera sees. If it is off and you haven't added the wedge, it gives you instructions on how to do so to get the viewing angle where you want it. It then asks you to test the doorbell itself to make sure everything sounded okay. If you have an electronic chime, you can select that option on this screen as well. You then choose a language, turn on audio recording if you want the audio that happens on your porch to be recorded, along with the video, and you can also turn on face detection, which works with a Nest Aware subscription, which runs $30 a year for a 5-day video history, $50 a year for a 10-day video history, and $250 a year for the 30-day video history. There are a number of other settings like scheduling, familiar faces that let you map faces of the people you know so that they're announced by name in your notifications, and other video and device options. A couple of those options worth noting are the activity zones in here where I can set up a zone to determine what I want the camera to watch and to notify me. And so if I do that, and then I can set those activity zones up and I can set up as many as I'd like. Also, the familiar faces area, once it has de detected faces, you can come in and label them, and it will announce the actual person who comes to the door if it recognizes them from your faces list here. So far, I'm really enjoying the Nest Hello doorbell. It has been solid for me and has been a great way to monitor the front of our home and to see who is at the door and even communicate with them without having to go to the front door itself. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.